Dinner Conversations is brought to you by Child Fund, a community development organization that has been envisioning a world where every child is free to live at their fullest potential, no matter where they're from or what challenges they face since 1938. Partner with us and our good friends at Child Fund to change the world and the life of a child by considering sponsoring a child today. It really does take so little to make a difference. Visit childfund.org forward slash dinner conversations. A child is waiting. When you asked me if I would want Patsy Claremont to interview me, I thought, wow, what a great, because you know she's so smart. Yeah, she is smart and wise. Ask great questions. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. She asked me what I was afraid of, what, what fear. What a great question. What do you fear? Yeah. I, I loved it because someone grilled him. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Well, I love this conversation, and I love these two people. So there's one seat left for you. No, one seat left, left at the table. table. So let's join the conversation. And it's yours. And let's it's yours. So one seat at, left at the table, and it's you yours. You want me to do that part? No. So there's one seat left at the table, and it's yours. So let's join the conversation. I have a thousand questions. Really? Just a thousand questions oh for my. you. I love it. You are so funny. And I wore my thankful shirt today to say thank you for bringing such a legacy of laughter for so many years, oh. you have been so consistent in your offering. And that's why so many people love you, I'm sure. Not only that you have an amazing voice when you sing, and you have written unbelievable songs, but you've made us laugh. There's nothing friendlier than sharing a positive emotion and you've created it in every space you've ever stepped in. So, from all your people oh. through my lips, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's been lovely. Now, I'm known for fear. Wouldn't you know it? I'm known for fear. And here's what I want to ask you. What scares you? I think that people would really know me. I, I've always thought if you knew me, you really wouldn't like me. When I, even when I was little. I guess that, because even I, the more I get to know me, it scares me a little too. <laughs> you know, and that, um, but I think humor most definitely was um, my tool to protect myself, but also to get attention. Because I wasn't the handsome one. My brother was a model. He did modeling in town. And then I show up with a waterhead. And, and, um, and I, I knew I would never be, I, he was sport, real good in sports. And so I was sent to a psychiatrist in third grade because I was so hyperactive and so much trouble. But I really wanted to make, I really wanted to make people laugh. I loved, it, it connects you. It, 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 it deflates any tension that might be in any room. Humor, and honest humor, especially if it deflates an elephant in the room, is a wonderful tool. It chases the awkward out of the air when you've got a group of strangers and they're not sure they're glad to be there. Suddenly, when they share the emotion that you've helped to create, they feel a little more comfortable and a lot more safe. Right. So it is a gift that you give, and it's always been a gift within you, right? I guess. I don't know. I didn't mean to get into humor. I did, I, I, the Lord literally in 1977 when I was at Liberty Baptist College, on my bunk one afternoon, the Lord spoke to me and said, why won't you do what I want you to do? And I said, what's that? And I mean, it was almost this, it wasn't audible, it was much louder than that. I understand that. And, um, and I was uh, praying and, and having this discussion with the Lord. And I said, well, what do you want me to do? I, I said, no, I said, I'll do anything you want me to do. And you know that. 
This is the first time we've ever had this discussion. This really is the first time we'd ever had a discussion that I can recall or really since. And, and he said, in my spirit, even if it means going to music, because I thought that was something you did as a child. I'd had a recording contract when I was 11 with the Benson wow. Company in town, which is a whole nother life and a whole nother story. Uh, so I thought that was something you did as a child. Now it's time to grow up, get a job, have a wife and 2.5 children, and support missions. That was my goal, to be a businessman. So I go to Liberty to study business, and the Lord, I wasn't in any chorale. I didn't audition for any singing group. That I didn't care if I ever sang again. It wasn't, it was, that was then, this is now, right? And I said, okay, I'll do it, but you, you know, this is your idea. You get the word out. And I put out a fleece to make sure it was the Lord, because I'd heard that's, that works. <laughs> it does. And um, he answered it that night. And not only that, he not only answered it, which was simple compared to what he did the rest of that week. Jerry Falwell passed me in the hallway, sing on TV Sunday. Charles Hughes walked up and said, will you be my singer? He was the, the evangelist, the big time evangelist in school who traveled every weekend. And immediately within a week, I was booked up through the end of that year and have not been unbooked to this day. Wow. Wow. And then the humor came. Let me tell you, if the Lord had said, I want you to go into comedy, I would have found myself in the belly of a whale. I would have run. Run so fast. Because it was never my, never, I still do not consider myself a comedian and shiver when I'm called that, which I've learned to accept it. But I'm not. Wikipedia says you are. Uh, and that's fine. <laughs> I mean, I, they got a label. People need to it help the record label when I signed with Word to know what I want. You know, they got to label you something. And that's fine. I don't care. It's a tool. To me, it's just a tool. And it's a tool that comes easy for me. That's how it started. And then we were in a van wreck, which became a story I told on one of my early albums called Pivot on Your Good Foot. And Walk Back to Me. That's what the nurse kept saying. And my good foot was broken. But that's a whole... You know, every <laughs> horrific thing I go through is a good 20-minute material when I'm done. So that's the reason on the motorcycle wreck, which you can Google it if you haven't, it's the Mark Lowry motorcycle wreck. I've heard it. You, on the way down, I told myself, don't go to sleep. Don't miss this. Because I knew something was going to happen. You know, I'm going <laughs> down face first without a helmet. First of all, I hope I live to tell myself how stupid that was. <laughs> And uh, but anyway, so that so I know to pay attention when the shawoo hits the fan. Shawoo, mm -hmm. nice That's word. That's the Christian way of saying it. I see. Mm -hmm. Well, you have a lot of fun words that you use and capture people, and I still remember at Women of Faith when you did the Sandy Patty thing with the wig. Oh, yeah. Hysterical. And I just saw a picture of you on something with Patty. Yeah, last night Sandy. at the Gospel Music Association right. Awards, which I was, was fortunate enough to be inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2011, I think, or a couple of years ago. I think they said 2011, but it feels like not that long ago. But anyway... So I was asked by Shonda, they, 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 give the, they induct people into the Hall of Fame and they give an honors for those who aren't in music but have done good things. Mm -hmm. And through her branches ministry, they honored that. And so she asked me if I would come and present it to her, so I did. So, so I ran into Sandy and Evie. Uh, I that was haven't Evie. heard that name in years. I'm only four foot eleven, but I'm going to hell. <laughs> you could sing that. I that could. makes me feel ten <laughs> feet tall. Remember that song? I, I surely do, but I thought I'd grown up past that. I was to <laughs> five foot. Oh, did you make and it? And when I went to the doctor recently, they said, that's that's a dream of your past. Oh, really? So I am. Um, Are you starting to shrink? downward. Yes. Me too. I said, I'm not going to die. These I'm going to evaporate. Th look at this. See how they used to not hang like that. <laughs> I'm shrinking. Well, I gotta join the this club. I got to up. But I checked, and your birthday, which is coming up I'll in just a little over a month, 
that is entry into some of the most productive uh, and exciting years because they're now you're at an age you can choose what you do. Exactly. And that adds another level of joy, and, doesn't it? But haven't it? you found it's hard to say no when you've said yes for so many years? Yes. But I agree. when you learn to say it, doesn't it come easy? But here's what I want to know. Does 60 scare you? Oh, no. Can't wait. Good. Because oh, no. those are great years, oh. energetic years, creative years. Good. I'm, that's good to hear. Yeah. I didn't know. I don't have a clue what, you know, you don't know what's coming. I say enjoy it. 70 is not that hot. But anyway. Is it not? <laughs> is 70 it's to 80 a toughie? Woo. Really? Uh, things change. But we'll just put it that way. Yeah including your ability to keep up with yourself. So I've thought about retiring. I can't, I'm never retiring. But I do, Good. I am going to sabbatical every now and then. And about every, I did it when I was 40. I thought it was over then. Because, you know, what, it, what? I couldn't think of anything new to say. And I'm repeating myself, and I'm doing that now. And here's the thing. You, if you don't have a life off the stage, you'll have nothing to talk about on the stage. So you're going out for an adventure. I am. Life is an adventure. That's the reason I've never understood the thing about arrival. There's no arrival. Now, when I was young, there was an arrival. I wanted a word recording contract. When, when the Lord called me, I had some goals. Never thought about being in the vocal band, but that was a good thing. It turned out to be that a very good a thing. That was a very good very thing. Very good thing. But that was never a goal because I didn't think I was able or capable. And also, singing was never my priority. Once I realized... Those audiences that I'm singing, those independent Baptist churches that I performed <laughs> for from 1980 to 1988, 200 a year. Wow. Roy Morgan, who graduated the same year I did, took the BBF directory, and this guy could book a pork chop into a synagogue. He booked me <laughs> in 43 concerts in 41 days right out of college, and they didn't know who I was from a hole in the ground. Wow. So wow. I, I did that for eight years. But what I learned during that time of phenomenal honing my craft, oh, my gosh, they were great days. I had my trunk and my PA, my PA system in the trunk, my polyester suits on a bar across the back <laughs> seat, my albums and my eight tracks lined up on the back seat, and my old notepad right here in case I thought of something while I was driving. And I'd sometimes pull over, because I'd be thinking, me and the Lord, I'd just turn the radio off and just start thinking and talking to God about stuff and get to laughing sometimes so hard I'd pull over and I'm laughing and I'm crying and I'm writing stuff down that I'm going to talk about that night. And it was just a wonderful time. And nobody knew me. You know, they, they didn't know what to expect. No there was this kid from Liberty, mm -hmm. right? So I'd stand up on the first song I'd sing, In this very room, there's quite enough love for one like you. And it's 15 minutes on a Sunday morning, and the first song is beautiful, but it's slow. And it's boring if you think you're going to have to hear 15 minutes of this. <laughs> I learned to set them up that you're about to be so bored. And then after I got through that song, I'd talk. And I'd talk about Miss Barth a sixth grade teacher, uh, which became one of my stories. And I talk about being a hyperactive kid and being on Ritalin, and they would laugh. These independent Baptists would not clap because that's giving <laughs> glory to men. They wouldn't shout because they're afraid someone might think they're doing it in another language. <laughs> but they would laugh, and I knew they were listening. And when I could, when I could see them listening, because when I'd sing, I could tell they weren't really listening. You know, I can't hit the high notes. That's what, make, what they listen to. But when I talked, and so I started talking more. Dinner Conversations is brought to you by Child Fund, a community development organization that has been envisioning a world where every child is free to live at their fullest potential, no matter where they're from or what challenges they face. And they've been doing this since 1938. 
Child Fund's mission is to help bring positive and lasting change to communities around the world by removing the barriers that keep children from realizing and reaching their dreams. Worldwide, over 570 million children are living in extreme poverty. For too many families, access to health care is a luxury, and opportunities for education and employment are extremely limited, forcing parents to often make choices that hinder rather than promote their children's futures. Child Fund's community development programs address these issues so that children around the world don't just have to survive, they can truly thrive. Today, it is the support from sponsors like you that allows Child Fund to focus on the children and build lasting relationships with the communities like the ones we visited in Guatemala. Child Fund strives to help provide communities with critical necessities, including education, clean drinking water, food and nutrition, basic health care and hygiene, and helping children and parents alike know and understand their basic human rights. We believe every one of us have been created unique with value on purpose and in love by God. We have been created in the image of God. The children we met in Guatemala are image bearers of our creator. Think about that. And I believe to love God best, we must learn to love our neighbors even better. Our neighbors like these children in Guatemala. Child Fund is giving us that unique opportunity, all of us, you guys and us, to serve God by loving these children through sponsoring a child today. Perhaps you already sponsor a child. Would you consider sponsoring another child in Guatemala? Maybe honor one of your children, a new grandchild, a special niece or nephew. These kids are real kids with real dreams, just like the dreams of your kids and grandkids. We know because we met them. Mm -hmm. Kids that want to be doctors and lawyers and teachers and musicians, just like us. Mm -hmm. Your child sponsorship of $36 a month will immediately link you with the child that you can write letters back and forth with, correspond, send pictures of you and your family, even potentially visit one day. It really does take so little to make a big difference. Mm -hmm. Visit childfund.org forward slash dinner conversations. A child is waiting. As a small way to say thanks for your Mm -hmm. child sponsorship, we will send you an autographed season two DVD and songs from the set (laughs) CD. Yes, plus a special item made just for you by the communities in Guatemala. And every sponsor and a guest is invited to a Dinner Conversations Friends and Family Weekend in Nashville. Hey now, which includes meal times with Mark and me, private little concerts and chit chats with our friends and a special Sunday morning service that will happen right before you head out of town. And if you sponsor more than one child, you will have the opportunity to be a guest on an actual episode of Dinner Conversations during the Friends and Family Weekend in Nashville. Does it get better than that? Does it, Mark? Does it? Stay tuned for exact details. And don't forget to visit childfund.org forward slash dinner conversations to sponsor your child today. So it's fair to say that you've never been afraid of getting up and communicating in some form. Is that correct? Well, afraid, uh, afraid, no. Uh, Butterflies, Oh, that's good. Adrenaline. Uh, Yeah, adrenaline. Yeah. uh, Wanting to say something that they can take home with them. You know, I pray every night before I got there for number one, God go with me, which he always does. Thank you, Lord. And that I will say something that matters to somebody, you know, that that they can take that little uh, cliche they might hear me say and hold on to. Or a song that might, you know, whatever. These are all tools. Did you ever feel like you failed an audience? Yeah. Last night, probably. (laughs) (laughs) I should have taken a little more time introducing Shonda. I I went too quick, and I think I didn't do good. You probably did excellent, but I understand going back. Because the night was so long. And I was thinking, oh gosh, I don't want you know, I don't want to want to get it to Shonda. You know, I, 
And so I went to bed kind of discouraged about that. But I rarely ever, ever, I mean, if I noticed something went wrong, something really went wrong. Because I'm not a noticer. And I do not rehash the night. To me, it's like passing a test. When I'm, it's like at the end of the school year, I'd throw my books away. Because that was over, never to be thought of again. <laughs> And to me, so you every, just let day, it go. every day is a test. Every uh, And most of them are pretty good and easy. Good days or what I call the, the easy test. But the days you hit Shepherd Drive without a helmet, the day you get the doctor's report, you know, those days, um, that's when you learn stuff about God. Really learn it yeah. at a deep level. Do you ever feel like you hide behind your humor? Oh, I'm sure. I mean, I do, and sure. I'm just wondering. Describe, define that. Well, when I feel um, that I'm not doing well or I'm feeling insecure or I'm afraid of a situation, I'll make some little funny comment or I'll tell a funny story yeah. uh, to but it, change is that the bad? atmosphere. I, I don't know that I'm saying it's bad. Yeah. I'm just saying it can be a refuge. Yeah, I'm sure I did growing up. Like, I remember, I don't know if I dreamed this, one of my earliest memories is I went with my brother and my mother on one of his modeling jobs in Houston, mm-hmm. and all these beautiful kids were there, you know? And, but somehow, I ended up in a corner with all those beautiful kids listening to me talk, and they were laughing. <laughs> and I can remember that. And I think that is probably when I realized, okay, I can fit in with this. This is my, maybe I didn't, I don't think I was old enough to even think that through. I had only been there three or four or five years, you know, what do you know? But I remember them laughing and I remember I liked it. Yes. Yes, there is a joyous thing to the sound of uh, group laughter. I can remember hearing an audience laugh. And that wafted up, and I thought, and for this I was born. And didn't you? <laughs> and you know, you and I both have had the privilege of knowing what that feels like. Yes, it's I a remember thing. when I was my first time. I was in front of eleven thousand people with the Gaither Vocal Band. It was at Gaither's Praise Gathering in Indianapolis that he did for years. They did for years. But it was early on, I was still auditioning for the vocal band, and Bill turned me loose. And it was in the round, all right? It was in the round. So the stage is here. So there's 11,000 people facing you from every direction. Right. And I tore into, I was born in, a, I was born in Houston. I was raised in a Christian home. My daddy was a church deacon. My mama was a church piano player, and I was a church brat. And I went on into the hyperactive stories. And I'd never heard that many people laugh like that. And it was, and being able to time, you know, the timing thing you get going, it's like playing tennis, which I've never done. But I can imagine it's like you you hit it, they laugh, you hit it back, they laugh, (laughs) you hit it again. It is invigorating, isn't it? It is. I I do coaching and I've been asked, uh, how can you teach someone timing? And I said, there's a lot of things you can teach. Timing is not one of them. It's a listening. It's a feeling. And you know, this is the time to enter back in. This is the time to pull back out. Yeah, and that's why Gaither always left my mic open. It was always open. Well, I don't know about that because he did. I I crossed the line uh, a time or two. I'm sure. In fact, I can remember a couple. But he still left it open because you cannot you cannot be a second late when when the when the opening is there and it goes. You cannot filter it. You've got to trust this unregenerated brain to make sure you're. I think I am filtered. I must be filtering because I've never said anything that's really horrible that I know of, you know. I and mean, that's miraculous, it don't is. you think? Yeah. Well, the worst, the only <laughs> For time, any of us. The only time Gaither ever got on to me was one time. Uh-oh. When we were um, on, on a, there's a bit, back in the big days, 20,000 people there. And we were in the round in Charlotte probably on New Year's Eve because it was a huge crowd. And I said a line, because everything, 
everything we did was off the cuff at one time. But if it works, you just you, did it you do it again, uh-huh. and then if you add something to it, the next and that works. You do if it doesn't <laughs> something doesn't work, you take don't. that out. Yeah, it's, <laughs> there's no rehearsal. It's just it, it in the moment. And Gaither forgets nothing. He can remember every setup. Sometimes the next night he'd set it up, and I'd already forgotten. <laughs> so I had to learn to remember those. Oh, things. that makes me feel good. <laughs> yeah, and so one, I said something. I said I did a joke that didn't go over. I can't remember what it was, and he and, and it was crickets. And I said, oh, well, I'll save that for when I go secular. Okay. And I just moved on. I mean, it was just, it was so fast. It wasn't like, (gasps) but in Gaither's heart, it was, (gasps) (laughs) and he took me aside during intermission and said, you've got to apologize to that crowd. I said, why? And he said, you told them you're going to save that joke for when you go secular. And he said, and this was probably 1980, no, 1992. So, Amy Grant crossing over was, everybody was still kind of sensitive towards that. You know, there was that, the church didn't accept that real good for They her. didn't know what to do with it, did they? They didn't. And when you don't know what to do, do nothing. That's the best thing you can do <laughs> until you figure out what Hush. to do. Hush. Until, <laughs> you remember, you're the kid. He's the father. He'll deal with us. So I reared up because Bill will let you do that. If, I mean, I've stood up to him many times. And when I disagree, I can't just go along. You know, I just can't. It's not in you. And he has <laughs> learned to appreciate that and trust it, too. And I had no intentions of apologizing until I actually did it. And I was in the second half of the show. <laughs> and uh, I said, you know what I said in the first half? I uh, said about... You know, I'll save that joke for when I go secular. I said, I'm sure most of y'all didn't even hear it. I said, but Bill cornered me at intermission and said I had to apologize. I said, first of all, didn't y'all know I was kidding? (laughs) I said, where am I going to go? We have 20,000 people here tonight. Where do you go from here? That's right. People Magazine asked me years ago when I was interviewed by them when I was an up and coming and everybody thought I was going to be something. <laughs> they asked me, do you, do you ever want to cross over? And I said, yeah, if I can take the crossover. Oh, I ain't going sweet. without him. But I mean, I'd have no intent. The world didn't call me to this. You know, really. I wouldn't be doing this if God wouldn't call, hadn't called me and I'm quitting the day he lets me go. Because I'm not addicted to it. I can live without it. You can help change the life of a child today by partnering with Andrew and me and supporting a boy or girl in Guatemala through Child Fund today. Your sponsorship will not only improve the future of one child's life, your child's sponsorship will promote communities in Guatemala, the communities that Mark and I just visited, where we saw parents who are learning to value and to protect and to advance the worth and rights of their teens and children, who through your child sponsorship are literally changing the culture of each child's community from the inside out. Perhaps you already sponsor a child Would you consider sponsoring another child in Guatemala? Maybe in honor of one of your children, a new grandchild, a special niece or nephew. It takes so little to make such a profound difference in the life of a child. Your sponsored child is a real kid with real dreams, just like the dreams of your children and grandchildren. We know because we met them, Mm -hmm. kids that want to be doctors and lawyers and teachers, even musicians kind of like us. Your sponsorship gives these children their chance to achieve their very unique dreams. You may not be able to change the whole world, but you can change the world for one child. Visit childfund.org forward slash dinner conversations to sponsor a child in Guatemala today. To learn more about dinner conversations, visit dinner-conversations.com. And while you're there, check out some of our friendly merch. We've got show mugs and season one and two DVDs. And we got these little note cards so Mark can write me a note that says you're the best co-host oh, ever. Oh, yes. Well, you know, you get that after every episode. And what about this mug with our faces on it? What says good morning better? It's like... We're on both sides, so now lefty or righty, you get to see us every morning. 
You know, I think it's time we get back to those guests. Yeah, probably. Okay, I'm gonna turn this right around in a little circle and ask you this. I'm gonna go back to the topic of fear. And I wanna ask you, do you think that women are more susceptible to fear than men, or do you think men? The women that I'm close to, I would say yes. Uh, I, I, I call one of my dear, dear, one of my favorite people in the world, my dear friend, Colleen. She's on a lot of my Mondays with Mark because we go out and eat a lot together. She's divorced, and, and we've been friends since high school. And I call her death, doom, and destruction. And her mother <laughs> is even worse. And she's 90. I mean, what do you have to fear at 90, right? You've already outlived everything. <laughs> All your friends are dead. Enjoy what you got left. What are you fear? But they're scared. You know, I got a scoot. I got these scooters. They won't ride the scooters. You know, they're scared. Everything's scared. My gosh, you got to die of something. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Let's make it something well, I mean, exciting. Don't huh? you want to live while you're here? <laughs> You know, so I don't know. What do you think? Do you think women are more fearful than men? I just know my own journey and it was one of great fear, but I found that fear was my hiding place. Oh. So that was a discovery. I still had to deal with all the fears, but underneath the fear was anger. Do you anger. fear anything now? Um, when I was a child, what I feared most was my mother using both my names. When she said Patsy Jean, I knew I was in big trouble. Oh. And she was four foot ten and a half, and you did not mess with my mama because she did oh, you. Yeah. So um, that did then. Then I went into collecting fear as a hobby. Evidently, I had so many. But today, what do I fear? I fear. No, I can't think of anything that particularly threatens me at this point like it once did. Yeah. There's that comparison thing. You always think back, this is where I was, this is at where I'm at. I've come a long yeah. way, baby. And don't you find that the things you feared that, that never happened? Those aren't the ones but, but I they should never have been happened. afraid of. Yeah. You know, waiting for the other shoe to fall. I was waiting for everybody to find out I'm really not that funny or I really can't sing baritone. I'm waiting on Bill to discover that, uh, I don't always act like a Christian. Come to find out he doesn't either. You know, when I found out Gloria Gaither, well, not Gloria so much. I really don't know what, if I, you know, I don't know what I would say her sin that easily besets her, but I like knowing what it is. I like knowing at least everybody's got one. Ooh, mine is cranky. What's yours? No way. Yeah, I get so cranky. I just got a puppy. Do you know that people in their 70s shouldn't have puppies? Why? Well, they just don't have the skill anymore. It's like having an infant. Well, you're going to keep it, aren't you? Are you? Are you in love I with am, it? I am so in love with this puppy. Yeah. But she's sassy. She yeah. misbehaves. She bites. She no. barks. She, oh, no. She's got so many bad habits. And one day I looked at her she? and I thought, this is me. This is me in fur. And so it has been very eye-opening to see. I used to judge people who had yappy dogs. Oh, yeah. And now I've got a yappy dog. No, I've Don't never judge had a yappy people, one. Because it'll come back Yeah, on I won't judge. Time. I don't judge. You know, I, I'm lucky because Bo showed up 15 years ago, mm -hmm. and he's still with me. Bo, Sweet. my little black, 15. now gray-headed dog. But anyway... And then Stanley, who's passed, found him a couple of years after Bo showed up, eating trash behind the Walmart. Now, these two dogs were street dogs, and they were the sweetest. They are, Bo still is, kindest. And then I've had a couple that I bought, which were uh, Yorkies, and they were a little entitled. I think when you <laughs> buy them, they have a little bigger spirit of like thinking they might be, you might owe them something. Well, this one, um, actually, someone bought it and it was so naughty. She didn't want it anymore. Aww. So I took it saying, love conquers. Yeah, right. I could be wrong. You could be wrong. <laughs> what kind is it? It is a Shih Tzu oh, Bishan. there's a problem, yeah. Anything starts with Shih Tzu, you might not ought to. Um, <laughs> I should have reconsidered. yeah. yeah. And They're like little mops running around there, aren't they? They are. They're she's, cute. She's, Does she sleep with you? 
Um, it, she does not. Uh, she comes up on the bed and sleeps at the foot of the bed for a while, and then I make her go to her cage, and she's so happy to get there. If I don't send her in in time, she oh. jumps up and looks at me like, come on, send me to bed. Oh, I love that. <laughs> so love dogs, um, but what I love most in life is the people God has transformed for purposes they've lived out. And you've done that so well. Oh, my. So thank, thank you, you for what you bring to the body of Christ because God has claimed it and proclaimed it to be medicine. And we live in a sick society that needs to laugh themselves well so they can get in touch with Jesus, uh, the one who brings us such joy. So thank you. Thank you, thank my you. friend. Thank you. This is for you. I love you. Toast. Thank you. <laughs> I can't believe I told her all that. Oh, that little old woman has so many questions. I ruined my testimony. Don't worry about it, Mark. Like you always said, no one sees this show. Oh, yeah. What was I thinking? That's great. <laughs> Oh, we want to thank that sweet Patsy Claremont One for being with us. One of our favorites. Oh, yeah. Interviewing you. God bless her. Oh, bless her. Oh, gosh. So you can find all of Patsy's books, which will be helpful in understanding what Mark said in this episode in the Amazon affiliate link below. Yeah, and if you want to binge watch Dinner Conversations, you can do that right now on Amazon Prime. Dinner Conversations is brought to you by Child Fund, a community development organization that has been envisioning a world where every child is free to live at their fullest potential, no matter where they're from or what challenges they face since 1938. Partner with us and our good friends at Child Fund to change the world and the life of a child by considering sponsoring a child today. It really does take so little to make a difference. Visit childfund.org forward slash dinner conversations. A child is waiting.